hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel today we're learning how to make a shirt dress don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so let's get started to make a shirt dress you need to know how to draft a basic dress pattern so um i'm going to show us how to draft that now so I have an already drafted basic dress pattern here, so I'll just explain what I've already done already. So this is my shoulder line and this is my chest line. Okay, half of your arm circumference is the distance from shoulder to chest line. Then shoulder to the waistline, okay, shoulder to the hip line. On the average, the hip depth is always 24. That is from shoulder to the um, hip line. Most people eat 24, and then this is the length of the shirt dress. Okay, then um, you can make it shorter if you want to. Okay, so I use half of my across back measurement on the shoulder line. Okay, and I added ease of half inch because the shirt dress is meant to be free, so you have to add ease to all your measurements. Okay, so same thing on the chest line, I've marked so quarter of my bust circumference measurement plus half inch for ease and then um, I now added um, one inch for side seam allowance so I'm adding ease to all my measurement like I said yeah so and then my one is seam allowance okay on the waistline I marked quarter of my waist circumference measurement plus um, one inch for ease and one inch for seam allowance and there's no dart on the waist, please. There's no dart. On the hip line, I marked cut off my hip plus one inch for ease and one inch for side seam allowance. Okay. So, same thing on the hemline, except you want just to be pencil, but this is a shirt dress meant to be free. So, same thing on the um, hemline. You can see that the line is straight. Okay. Then for the lower part, I want it slightly curved. So I came up by three inches, okay, and then I curved it from the midpoint, okay. So this is about 5.5 .5 inch on the center back, and I curved it there. So this pattern is gonna be the back pattern, okay. And then what else? What else? Okay, the neckline, the neckline, yeah. So like I said, there is no dart on this dress. So the neckline. I used um, 2.5 inch for my neck width and 1 inch for neck depth. Now, everybody should use 1 inch for neck depth, but for the neck width, it's going to differ, okay? Because we have different uh, neck sizes. All right, now for the front pattern, it's the same thing with the back. The only difference is these 3 inches I left, okay? For the button and the folding allowance, every other thing is the same thing. Okay, then the, I think the neckline, I still maintain my 2.5 inch for neck weight and then 3.5 for neck depth. You can make it 4 inches if you want it a little bit lower. So it's all everything is the same thing for both front and back pattern, just um, the bottom and the folding allowance. Now I am going to cut out, but I want to extend the Z and button allowance on the neckline by cutting out the spots. Okay, so I hope we're not confused. Now I've transferred all my patterns to my fabric. Okay, so um, for the front pattern, I'm using two different um, fabrics. And I'm adding half inch to the neckline, the shoulder slant, and the armhole, and of course, the M line of the dress. Okay. Okay, so I'm using chiffon and um, Ankara fabric. You can use crepe. So these are the two front pieces. And for the back pattern, I'm using chiffon. Okay. So, um,. You will also add half inch seam allowance to the neckline, the shoulder line, and the armhole, and of course the hemline. Yes, so if you are still a beginner, you may want to use crepe. Chiffon is very slippery to work with. This is my basic sleeve pattern. I just added each to it, and then um, I used my bicep measurements, okay, for the hemline. 
okay so um it's not your fitted sleeve it's going to be fitted at the cuff and then i'm going to have a cuff here okay so this is um 21 inch for the length of this particular sleeve then the cuff will be about three inches long so in total the length of my sleeve is 24 inches so i'll just see madame okay so by the time we finish we're going to be making gathers around the wrist you know to gather it back into the cuff so um i use my bicep measurement all the way down here so if you don't know how to cut a basic sleeve just check one of our old tutorials there's a video there on how to cut a basic sleeve all right so um what are we doing next yes um we want to drop the color yes so we are going to measure the necklines that's why it's advisable for you not to add seam allowance to the pattern yet so i'm measuring my back neckline this is about um three inches because it's a curve yes so you just curve the tape like this that's three inches then i'll also measure the front neckline okay starting from the center front here please okay you measure the um the button allowance parts just from the center front so i'm going to place the curve sorry my tape to measure the curve like so then i'll add both of them together so this is five and the neckline for the back is three so everything is making eight for me you have to measure yours okay you have to measure yours it's very important you get this right so now i'm going to show us how to draft the color okay so like i said um the width is not the same for everybody now to draft the color i'll draw a straight horizontal line this is going to be um, the neckline that will be attached to the dress so i'll mark eight inches okay unfold then the height of the collar stand um i want to work with 1.5 inch you can do one inch then i'll, I'll just um, draw another line like so so we're drafting the collar stand okay so i'll just connect it together so that's eight inches by 1.5 inch now um from the neckline this is center back i will measure the um curve for the back neckline again for more emphasis that's three so from the, the um center back here i'm going to mark three on both sides like so can you see then i'll come up by half half inch as you can see half inch then i would um, connect like so so at the end of the day my height is to 1.5 but it's now curved and not straight because our necklines are not straight it's curved so that the color can fit perfectly into um at the neck so that's that i hope that um, was clear enough then I want to add one inch for the button allowance, like so, and then just curve it down like this. Okay, we want to drop the color now. Okay, so from here. I'm going to mark um, the length of the collar. Okay, so I'm doing 2.5 inch here. Then from this cut part, I'm going to mark 3 now because this side is supposed to be slightly longer than the center back. This is the center front. should be longer than the center back, which is 2.5 inch. Okay. Then I'm going to connect it together like so. So the line is not straight, it's a bit slanted. Okay, so this is now the collar. 
this is my center back this is the color stand and this is the main color so we have two in one okay then for this part you can leave it straight or you could just slant it though is it looks nicer when you slant so i'll just go back by half inch you can go back by one inch and then you draw this down like so so we're cutting off here i hope we're not confused so um that's that then we're gonna use our tracing wheel to trace out the color stand and then the main color out okay so i'm going to cut out so i want to trace out um the color the color now i want to trace out the color Oh, sorry guys, I made a little mistake. Sorry. The slant is supposed to start from here, please. Sorry. So about it's supposed to start from the color stand. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's just a slight um correction. I hope we're not confused. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna trace out the um this is my color stand, don't forget, and this is the main color I'm emphasizing. So that we don't get confused. So I'm tracing out the color stand with my tracing wheel. Okay, so this is it. Now I'm tracing out the main color. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. So I'm tracing out the main color. Can you see the direction? Because on this paper, I have the color stand and the color. So I have to trace one out and leave the other one. Okay. So let me... I've traced out now I can okay let me trace out the color first so that's one very important importance of your tracing wheel it saves you the stress of drafting and drafting all over again just trace it out so this is my color okay and then on this other paper i cannot cut out the color stand the color stand you don't have to use 1.5 inch you can actually use one inch to do it yeah so i'm cutting out okay um i'm adding half inch here when i'm cutting on fabric then i want to just create a slight curve instead of having the straight look okay so aside the one inch you added to the color stand at the center front you're still going to add half inch for joining. So this is my color stand. This is my color stand. So I'm adding half inch round except the um, center front, which is going to be on. Sorry, center back on fold. I beg your pardon. So I'm also going to cut this out. For this, I'm also going to be adding half inch round except the center back. Okay. So I'm adding half inch. This is my center back. Okay, I'm adding half inch here, half inch here, and half inch here too. Okay. It's very important, please. So these are my two patterns for the color and the color stand. Okay, guys, so I think we can dive into the sewing parts now. So I'm just going to open my back piece. I'm taking off the pins. Okay. So this is my back piece. And then I would also be um, taking out the pins on the front pieces because I want to join the front and back pieces together at the shoulder. Like so. So I'll go ahead. I want to just show us um, the front pattern again. So don't forget that um, 
we added three inches for button allowance and folding you can see my three inches okay same thing at the hemline so i'll just mark um one one inch okay i want to just explain something to us so you take your fabric to the pressing iron and fold one inch like this so you have one inch up one inch down that's two inch already okay you fold this with your pressing iron i mean the fabric i'm just using the paper as an illustration like so then you fold again making two inches so the extra one inch now is for the button so on the two front pieces i folded in one inch twice like this can you see the fold same thing on my chiffon fabric you have to use pressing iron to do that so you have to do that with your pressing iron okay guys so i've joined the front and back together the shoulder okay now i'm going to be attaching my sleeves okay this side and the plain fabric to the other side now i've attached my sleeve like so okay now i'll be sewing my side seam allowance starting from the sleeve one inch all the way down from here all the way down to the hemline of the dress on both sides of the dress all done all done so simple so i've done that already can you see the sewing okay then make sure you open the seam allowance and press flat okay then for the button allowance i'll go ahead and sew all the way down very close to the edge of the fold like one eighth of an inch i'll go and sew it down okay so i've done that already i've done that already so this is going to be where the buttons are going to be so you can overlap it whichever way the plane on the fabric or the fabric on the plane whichever one you want to do now we're going to go straight to the collar this is the collar stand okay i added half inch And make sure you cut the collar on bias. This is normal folding. But when you want to, once you want to cut on bias, you fold in form of a triangle like this. And place the collar at the edge of the fold like so. Okay. So um, for the collar stand, make sure you add half inch round. Okay. Half inch round. And um, open up. And then this is the main color. Now I was we're supposed to add interfacing to the color to give it stability. Then mind you, for this color stand, I had to cut another one because I forgot to add half inch seam allowance here and the other side. So I had to cut another one. Okay. So I've added my half inch seam allowance round. Okay. now we are going to be sewing the um collar collar first yeah and i'm folding my fabric into the two um this is my center front and um good this is the collar stand can you see and then this is the main collar I just hope we're not confused <laughs> so um i have sewn my collar okay i've sewn it round the lower parts and um the edges let me place a pattern so that we can see it 
Like so. Am I right? No, it's this way. Oh, good. So I've sewn here and the top part. So it is only the lower part that's remaining that is still left open. Okay, this is it. Oh, I think you guys will understand better like this. So this is the edge of the collar. Now I'm going to place the collar in between the fabric and lining of the collar stand. I'm trying to place it in such a way that we're not going to be confused, you know, in front of the camera. This is the collar stand, okay? And um, this is the part that will be fixed to the collar here. Okay. So I'm going to fold and notch. I'm notching it so that I can get the midpoint. So this part I'm notching, this line is the part that will be fixed to the collar. Then the other part on top is going to be fixed to the neckline. Good. I hope you get it. So this is the neckline. Okay. It is the upper part that we are sewing. So I'm placing um, the collar. Before I do that, I also want to notch it to get the midpoint so that all everything will be well balanced. Now I'm going to place it in between the fabric and the lining of the collar stand. Can you see that the notches are touching each other? Good, like this. So you want to just use your pins to secure them together to avoid any form of stretch. So I'm sewing half inch like this, half a then half inch on both sides. So aside the one inch for the um, um, button allowance on this side, you still need to add half inch like I said earlier on. Okay, here. So can you see my sewing? Okay, now um, I'm going to flip over to the other side. Make sure you clip the sharp edges with your scissors. Just clip it up. I'll open up to the other side like this and then give it a good press. I'm just using my um, scissors to push in the edge as well. Okay, so I have given it a good press. Can you see? So make sure you add interfacing to the collar stand and the main collar. So I'm folding right away and I'll just um, notch the center again so that I can match it with the back neckline. Now, this is my dress. I'm also going to fold the back piece, just the neckline. I'll fold it and notch the center, the center back. Like so. And I'll open up the collar and, not, and uh, match up the, neck, the dress and the collar stand together. Yeah. Like this so I'll just at this point you need to use your pins if you don't use a pin either the color or the fabric is going to stretch and then there is tendency for you to want to start creating pleats so once you pin the center back okay um we're actually starting from inside first okay so you pin the center back and the center um center front please make sure you use your pins you know so here you sew it together now i've done that already you're sewing with a um, quarter of an inch initially okay so you can see my collar there is no pleats that's why I'm emphasizing the use of pins. Then for this other side, you just take this to the pressing iron, you know, fold in the half inch allowance and iron before you sew.
okay i've already ironed it so sewing will be very easy so i'll just like so from um here you pin it down on the other side so before you start sewing please if you don't pin your fabric will stretch and then you want to cheat by having tiny pleats and your collar isn't supposed to have any form of pleats so i'm just pinning down carefully Then I'm gonna sew it. Okay, guys, my shirt is already taking shape. It's already taking shape. Now we're gonna work on the sleeves. Now to work on the sleeve, we're going to be cutting what we call a cuff. So you measure your wrist measurements. Okay, you measure it where the cuff is going to start from. You just make it slightly fitted. Whatever you have is going to be the width of the um, cuff. Okay, so this is the width of the cuff. Unfold, I beg you, unfold. And then this is the width of the cuff. Okay, then um, what else? What else? The height or names of the width. The height of the cuff is going to be the remaining part of the sleeves, which is three inches. So I have it already cut out. This is how it's going to be. It's going to overlap by quarter of an inch. Okay. So the, my width is three plus half inch for seam allowance. Now to fix the cuff, you're going to take your sleeve. This is my sleeve. This is the back, the take note, the back. I want to create a vent for the back. So I'll just measure about, um, say, three inches. I'll find the midpoint first. I'll first of all find the midpoint. Okay, I'll mark it. Then from here, I'll just create a vent of about three inches, like so. And then I'll just fold. And then don't cut straight, just cut like a slight curve. So by the time you want to sew that part, it won't give any issues. So just create a slight curve. Okay, so just curve it a little, just a little like this. So by the time I open it up, I have um, a curve. Don't worry. When I open up, you see it's better on the plain fabric. Yeah, it's the same process. So I'll just find the midpoint of my sleeve opening. At the back, the back place on the front. Then I'll just come up by three inches, draw a straight line, and then I'll fold. Please don't fold the front, just the back, please. And then you create a slight curve, like I said, to that point. Okay, so here have a curve now um you're gonna pick up your cuff okay your cuff is on fold you just leave about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fold okay just before we do that before we do that we need to use our bias to like knitting the vent we can't leave the vent open like that okay so i'll just do that Okay, guys, so this is my vent. Can you see? So you make sure you use the matching color to, you know, close the vent on both sides. Now, I've already fixed one of the sleeves. I want to just explain to you how it's going to be. So after fixing the vent, after closing the vent, or oh, sorry, knitting the vent with the um, bias tape, what you want to do now, you're going to pick up the cuff, okay? Then, obviously, the cuff is smaller than the sleeve opening. Yes. So, you're going to have to create pleats to fit into the cuff like that. Okay? So, you would have ironed in your half inch seam allowance round with your pressing iron. Makes your shirt comes out very neat. Then, I'll place it at one edge of the vent opening. 
leave about a quarter of an inch outward you know flip out the sewing allowance first then the edge of the vent leave about a quarter of an inch okay for the overlapping of the button just quarter of an inch is fine like this then i'll just pin the cuff to the sleeve opening and then don't forget that we're going to be creating pleats, just tiny pleats on the sleeve opening so that it will fit into um, the cuff the width of the cuff is um, the uh, circumference of your wrist which is definitely smaller than your bicep measurement so I'll just pin the um, other end of the cuff to the other vent opening don't forget to lift quarter of an inch out a bit okay then I'll go ahead to sew around okay I've done that <sighs> this is one hell of a work okay so here then I would just you know sew the other end of the cuff to the other end of the sleeve opening so what you just do is you you clip um yeah you notch the center points and you also notch the center points of the cuff i'm trying to show us how to fix the cuff so that the pleats would be evenly distributed so i'll just match the two points together like this pin it together I'll pin it together can you see the excess this is the excess so i'll just split it to fit uh, into the um circumference of the cuff the reason for this is so that the pleats will be distributed evenly you won't have the pleats concentrated in just one side of the sleeve so let me do that i have to like do this again for proper understanding okay so this is the other end i'll do the same thing on this side of the cuff same thing okay so i've already folded in the seam allowance this is a quarter inch i told us to leave and this other side so this is a quarter inch you know extension now i also use my bias tape to go and hem the dress the hemline of the dress with my bias tape since red is the dominant color so i'm using red color okay so here i'm done fixing the cuff okay and i've already attached buttons to this other side here i'm using press buttons because it's neater okay so i'll just quickly show us how to fix just one of them it's the same process and i also fixed my buttons on the shirt okay starting from the collar stand and i use an interval of four four inches so that the buttons will, the opening will not be too wide and then so i use an interval of four four inches for the buttons so i left the last one so that i can just show us how i did it so um what you do is from the last button okay you mark your four inch mark so I've already marked it with um marker, but I think it's not visible. Let me mark it again. So this is my four inch. Okay, you only, once you mark it, it's very important. Then this is my um press button machine. So I'll just press the button downward. Then there's a, a smaller one. I'll fix it like this. If you want me to do a comprehensive tutorial on how to use this machine, you can state that in the comment section. Okay, so I'll just place my fabric like so. Make sure the marked point is facing the points in the machine. And then you press down. It's very easy. And neat. It's, that's just the word. It's very neat using the type of button. Okay, so here. Can you see? No sewing. No threads hanging. Very neat now to fix the other side what you do is um you take your 
chalk i'm using maca because of tutorial okay then i'll place the button on the other side and then mark where the button is touching the fabric like this okay then i have to change um the dies yes for this machine it has to you know i have to change the dies you have two different um dies fixing the button so i want to fix the button on the other side so i'll just do all that like i said if you don't know how to use this machine i can do a tutorial just indicate in the comment section okay so i'm fixing the other side of the button you know it's a press button so it has two sides so i'm just fixing the last one oh god Vowler, we are done so neat super neat that's why i prefer this style of fixing buttons is neat so this is the final outcome of the dress please give this video a thumbs up feel free to share and like thank you very much for watching bye